Okay, just a heads up, this intro is going to be a lengthy one, so if you're one of those people who hates listening to me ramble on, feel free to skip now. It's a bit of an unusual time to be doing this video, since up until about a month and a half ago, Maurizio Pochettino had one of the safest jobs in world football. Under his stewardship, Tottenham have become regular fixtures in the Champions League, finishing second once, and third twice in the Premier League, and even reaching the Champions League final last season. All this at a team that had only played in the Champions League once prior to his arrival, twice if you include the European Cup, and all achieved on a relatively modest budget and strict wage restrictions. They say a week is a long time in football though, and for Maurizio Pochettino, the last eight weeks must feel like an eternity. Spurs lost their third game of the season to Newcastle United, which remains to be Bruce's only win in charge of the Magpies, they were knocked out of the EFL Cup, by Colchester United, and they lost 7-2 to Bayern Munich in the Champions League, along with forfeiting 2-0 leads against both Arsenal and Olympiacos, losing at Leicester City, and most recently, a horrific 3-0 defeat at Brighton and Hove Albion. In the world of Premier League and Champions League football, that constitutes a bona fide crisis, and after Tottenham's latest defeat to Brighton, Pochettino is questioned as to whether he had fears over his job. Despite having gone trophyless, Tottenham have been very consistent over these last few seasons, and personally, I think they would be a bit mad to sack Pochettino at the first sign of trouble. The Argentine is a brilliant manager, and although I can understand Tottenham's fears that a lack of success could see their star turns look to the exit door, I suspect replacing Pochettino would do more harm than good, certainly in the long term at least. Anyhow, today we cast our minds back to Pochettino's very first competitive game in charge of Tottenham Hotspur. That came way back in August 2014, when debutant, a new signing, Eric Dyer scored the only goal of the game as Tottenham beat West Ham at the since-demolished Upton Park. Spurs went on to finish fifth that season, with familiar faces like Hugo Lloris, Danny Rose and Christian Eriksen in their starting eleven on the opening day. But today, we turn our attention to their seven-man bench. I should say very quickly before I start, for those of you who subscribe, you may have seen Lawrence's recent video on the channel whilst I was away. I recently spent a week on holiday, getting back on Friday evening, and a fair bit has happened in that time. Lawrence, formerly of 90 Min and the BBC, has joined the HITC YouTube team to run a sister channel, and also to provide videos when either myself or the Irish guy are away, with the aim of having 365 videos a year uploaded on both channels. I work religiously to try and upload every day, but on the rare occasions in which that's not possible, I hope you'll all give Lawrence a warm welcome and enjoy the content that he produces. There may well be another one of his videos up here on Monday, but I should be back to stay after that since Mykonos bled my bank account dry and any future holidays appear to be a pipe dream right now. Anyhow, thank you all for subscribing, I hope that clears up the situation, and if you don't already subscribe, then what are you playing at? There's no time like the present though, so please do go ahead and join the HITC7's family now. Back to the issue of the day, here are the 7 Tottenham subs for Maurizio Pochettino's first game. Where are they now? Brad Friedel, unattached manager. The first name on the Tottenham bench from Rizzio Pochettino's first game as veteran goalkeeper Brad Friedel. Having been first choice at White Hart Lane in the 2012 season, Friedel played second field to Hugo Lloris in the 12-13 and 13-14 campaigns, becoming Tottenham's oldest ever player in his 40s. A one-time Premier League Team of the Year inclusion, Friedel spent the bulk of his career at Blackburn Rovers and Aston Villa, as well as racking up 82 caps for the USA. Now aged 48, Friedel retired from playing at Tottenham in 2015, becoming the head coach of the United States' under-19 side shortly afterwards. He became New England Revolution manager in November 2017, before his contract was terminated in May 2019. When I first started writing about football professionally, fresh out of school, Brad Friedel tweeted me asking me to call him about an article I'd written. I was buzzed but it turned out it wasn't an overly positive call from his representatives, and Brad wasn't too happy with what I'd written. I won't elaborate for obvious reasons, so all I'll say is Brad Friedel is a great guy, a really lovely fella, and his premium soccer academy... <coughs> oh yeah, right. He's just a great guy. Michael Dawson, Nottingham Forest. An excellent servant to Tottenham Hotspur, it is a mark of how long Michael Dawson has been in the game that he has played at centre-back alongside the likes of Des Walker at Nottingham Forest, Ledley King at Tottenham, Harry Maguire at Hull City, and now Joe Worrell at Nottingham Forest. Dawson spent nine years at White Hart Lane, where he made 324 appearances, won one League Cup, and won Tottenham Player of the Year award. 
He departed in 2014 to join his brother and his former club Hull City, where he was promoted once and relegated twice, before returning to his boyhood club Nottingham Forest in the summer of 2018. Ben Davies, Tottenham. One of seven permanent signings made by Maurizio Pochettino's first season at charge at Tottenham Hotspur, Ben Davies, was actually the Argentines' joint first signing along with Michel Vorm in July 2014. Both players arrived from Swansea City and both spent the next five seasons with the club. Whilst Vorm departed at the end of last season when his contract expired, Davies is a regular in the Tottenham side. In his five seasons working with Poch, Davies registered a total of 168 appearances, an average of almost 34 games a season. He has jostled with Spurs favourite Danny Rose for that starting berth on left back over that time, as well as winning 46 caps for Wales. The fullback is now aged 26, and he has played in five for Tottenham's opening 11 games so far this season. Lewis Holby, Blackburn Rovers. A bit of a blast from the past for Tottenham fans. Lewis Holby was playing for Hamburg when I first planned this video, but he has since returned to the English game. A player who attracted interest around the turn of the decade due to his impressive performances for Schalke and the fact that he was eligible to represent either Germany or England, the midfielder ultimately opted for Germany. The son of a former British soldier, but born and raised in Germany, Holby represented his native Germany at multiple different youth levels and won three caps under Joachim Löw between 2010 and 2012. Holby also joined Tottenham in 2012, where there was some excitement about his cultured and neat play in midfield. He made 39 appearances in his first 18 months, but Maurizio Pochettino seemingly wasn't convinced. He played the German only three times in all competitions before letting him depart for Hamburg, firstly on loan and then on a permanent deal. Following five seasons back in Germany, Holby was released by the two Bundesliga side and he signed for championship outfit Blackburn Rovers just a few weeks ago. Andros Townsend, Crystal Palace. Born in Leytonstone, London native Andros Townsend joined the Tottenham Academy at the age of 8. An England international from under 16 to under 21 level, he broke into the Tottenham first team in 2009. He was then loaned out a whopping 9 times, spending temporary stints with Yeovil Town, Leighton Orient, MK Dons, Ipswich Town, Watford, Millwall, Leeds United, Birmingham City and Queen's Park Rangers. The 2013-14 season under Andre Villas-Powers and Tim Sherwood and Maurizio Pochettino's debut 2014-15 season were Townsend's only two seasons as a regular at White Hart Lane, and he departed in 2015, having played 93 games for the club. He also became an England international in that time and a bit of a favourite of Roy Hodgson's, scoring three goals from 13 caps. Townsend is now playing under Hodgson once again at Crystal Palace, having joined the Eagles from Newcastle United following a half season in which he impressed, despite getting relegated with the Magpies. Roberto Soldado, Granada. Roberto Soldado was one of a number of superb signings Andre Villaspas made in charge of Tottenham Hotspur, scoring prolifically and winning trophies aplenty as AVB wisely invested the money that Spurs had recouped by the sale of Gareth Bale. In an alternate universe, perhaps. In the real world, Soldado was maybe the worst of a pretty disastrous string of arrivals in North London, having been the club's record signing when he arrived for £26 million in 2013. Soldado had scored 81 goals in 141 games for Valencia, and even scored prolifically for the reigning European and world champion Spain, hence his lofty fee. In North London, the Spaniard showed none of those goal-scoring or predatory instincts, looking almost entirely ineffective. Following 16 goals in 76 games and only 7 goals in the Premier League over the course of two seasons, he returned to Spain in a £10 million move to Villarreal. Aged 34, Soldado joined recently promoted Granada in the summer just gone, where he has since scored one goal in seven games. Harry Kane, Tottenham. A centre forward who has done a little better for Tottenham than Roberto Soldado, to put it mildly, the final substitute on Maurizio Pochettino's very first Tottenham bench was Harry Kane. At that time, Kane had only scored 5 goals in 26 games for Tottenham and his low moves to the likes of Millwall and Leicester had been far from more inspiring. Certainly, he hadn't shown the kind of form that shrieks future Premier League and World Cup Golden Boot winner, but by his mid-twenties, that is exactly what Harry Kane has become. The 26-year-old England captain has scored 171 goals in 262 games for Tottenham, in addition to 26 goals from just 41 caps for England. Kane is a born goal scorer who is unmoved by the emotions and vagaries that seem to affect most footballers out on the pitch, and he could well become his club and country's all-time record goal scorer if he sticks out for long enough with both.
Kane is of course still at Tottenham and he has scored 11 goals in 12 games for club and country this season. That is it for today's video, but a quick update on the HITC7's fancy Premier League table before I leave you. Far more of you joined the league than even last season this season, which is a pain since it means it's much harder for me to win. Congratulations to Mike Maneri who currently tops the league with his pie and mash UNT sitting pretty with 497 points going into this game week, a tally which puts Mike 105th in the entire world. Honourable mentions go to Ollie Webb and Daniel Plan in 2nd and 3rd, whilst I myself am down in 224th, which is still in the top 1%, and 135,000 in the world, but some way off our league leader Mike. Thank you all for watching, please do give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and make sure you're subscribed to HITC7s.